anybody hear me? Okay. Um, I think that uh, somewhere around 400 years ago, after something like 150,000 years of human existence, there was an accelerating phenomenon that's still growing now and grown into a, a very large uh, body of knowledge called science. And uh, I don't think it gets nearly enough, uh, enough respect uh, in far, as far as how much effort and how much care and how much, how much resources it takes to, to come up with ways of actually teasing uh, the character of nature out of just the world. It's, it's extremely hard, um, and, uh, and I'm going to give one example uh, a little farther along in the, in the presentation, but uh, I think that, that starting a religion, in contrast, is extremely easy, and, and getting people to believe it is extremely easy. So um, why don't we push to go to the next slide? Um, this one? Okay. All right. Oops. Oh, how did that happen? Anyway, okay, um, I did a sort of a contrasty thing here. Um, in science, uh, everything is provisional. Nothing's ever proven. Everything is, is subject to, to further questioning. Um, and, and something is believed only as long as there isn't something better to substitute for it or is, there isn't a, a problem that's, uh, that, that shows that it has to be something wrong with it. And uh, in, in a religion, um, truths very often are considered to be eternal. Um, you don't question them, you don't overturn them, you don't, you don't have to really defend them. The, the, uh, you believe them by faith. Um, in science, uh, results need to be reproducible. Um, if you look at the example of, of uh, cold fusion, um, that was published after a couple of scientists in, I think it was in Utah, said that they had uh, gotten cold fusion to happen. There were a whole bunch of laboratories around the world that went to reproduce it. They found they weren't able to reproduce it, and as far as science goes, it just went by the wayside. There are still people that, that believe it's true, and it's just a conspiracy to, to uh, get us to pay a lot of money for electricity. But... Um, <laughs> And then, um, in, in religion, um, I don't know if anything's ever reproduced. It's basically a, a bunch of stories about singular events, things that happen and never happen again, and you, prefer, <coughs> you either believe it or you don't, but you don't get to go back and recheck. It's just, it just happens. Um, the static universe. Everybody thought until, well, the, it was sometime in the 1920s, that the universe was static. It was it's essentially, um, the same. It stayed the same forever and ever, and, and somehow never expanded or contracted, uh, never really changed. It turns out that uh, they discovered, with enormous effort, that the universe was expanding. And uh, probably will, for as long as there is a universe. Um, so all those things were overturned, and, and they've been believed for a very long time. Religion um, is different. Uh, Articles of faith are revealed, not discovered. You don't, essentially, some document shows up, usually uh, attributed to someone who had nothing to do with its, uh, its uh, making, um, some name, uh, or, uh, and then religious tenets are, are regarded as permanent. Um, we, aren't, we aren't looking to overturn, uh, religious people aren't overlooking, looking to overturn religious doctrines that they find problems with, they don't, they do try to replace them with something else, but typically it's another religion. Um, faith in the teeth of evidence is a virtue. There's lots and lots of rigid religious apologies have been made <coughs> where it was considered uh, a virtue to have faith when, especially when the claim of the religion was absurd. The fact that it was absurd meant that it just had, you had to have a stronger faith. But questioning of fundamentals is a sin, and uh, discovering something new is typically just a distraction from what the important thing is, which is to, is to get closer to God through the prescribed ways of 
Um, scientific results need to be reproducible. Uh, when a new observation or measurement is made, somebody else should corroborate it. Somebody else in a different organization, using different equipment or methods, uh, somebody who doesn't necessarily believe it at, at first, and uh, this, uh, you know, cold fusion, as, as I use as an example, um, and the superluminal neutrinos, which they, they thought they had seen in the superluminal meaning going faster than the speed of light, they thought they had seen in the particle accelerator in Europe. Um, you know, somebody else takes a look at it. If they don't confirm it, it goes by the wayside. Um, <laughs> no one ever checks on the miracles. Jesus healed the possessed with no follow-up. I remember reading that in, in Mark. Um, we go around, and, and the description that they had in, in the book of Mark was Jesus walking around, and, and it was obvious that the people he was seeing were epileptics. Right. They were having seizures, and they, but they said they were possessed by the devil. Well, you know, they, they talked about how he would say prayers over them or make pronouncements and drive out the, the demons and stuff. They never went back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the guy felt better. Well, and then, then they go on to the next thing. So you never really know that uh, he actually did anything. I mean, seizures stop on their own. So if you stand there and talk at somebody while he's having a seizure, it ends. <laughs> You can take credit for it, but um, so, um, all, all the important acts are in the past, and uh, but you can't you can't ask them to repeat. And usually they're in the distant past, and you don't even know if they, the events actually happen. You don't have an event to explain. What you have is a story about an event, and my, lots of times. You have multiple stories about the same event, and they don't even agree with each other. Um, anyway. Science requires consistency. Um, <coughs> chemistry and physics have to be compatible. Um, as it turns out, even linguistics and genetics tell the same story about the history of migrations of populations in, in Asia and Europe. Strangely enough, it, Surprised me, but but they really do. Um, and uh, <coughs> evolution and, and uh, chemistry and, and cosmology and all that stuff have to have to all work together, um, which isn't the case in uh, religion. Um, the contradictions in in say Christianity, I listed a few. Uh, the two creation stories in Genesis are really um, contradictory. Genesis 1 says one thing about the order and, and of creation. Genesis 2 says something completely different. They're not compatible. Um, they have uh, two, I think, in, in uh, genealogies for Joseph, the supposed stepfather of Jesus. Um, and they are, they plainly say they're both for Joseph. Uh, and they are very, very different. Um, you have several conflict conflicting accounts of the resurrection. Um, nobody seems to mind. Um, multiple versions of the Ten Commandments. Um, and then there are the contradictions of clear facts um, in, in the Bible and, and in other scriptures. Um, it doesn't really seem to matter. Um, Scientific theories need to agree with evidence. If uh, verified evidence conflicts with prevailing theory, the theory is in trouble. You know, there's there's a right now, and it has been for since the inception of relativity and quantum mechanics. They know that they disagree at uh, very small scales, and uh, so it's a it's an ongoing problem that people are working on. It's not something that people simply accept. In science, um, and a way for a scientist to make it big is to is to turn something over that's been well established to, to draw questions about about uh, established scientific dogma. I'd say, um, and then uh, if there's a new theory, then then it's going to replace the old one. It has to cover all the 
all the facts, um, and and also um, usually demonstrate something that we hadn't expected, um, predict something we hadn't expected. Um, trouble spots in science are what get all the attention. That's where where it goes. So um, always working on a new problem. On the other hand, religion only needs a good story. You have to have hooks, and the hooks typically are um, something some people want. It doesn't happen to be the case. So um, you don't have to die is, is a big one. Um, you never die. Uh, bad people would be punished. Uh, God loves us more than, than the nasty people on the other side of the river. Um, if you don't believe, and this is one of the big hooks, you'll, you'll burn burn in hell. And of course, that's that's why I think the people seem to want a higher standard of proof that there isn't a God than they want as a standard of proof for anything else. You don't, you don't use the ordinary standard of proof as that, that you do for, you know, whether there's a teacup orbiting Pluto, um, which is absurd. You, you postulate an absurd God, and you really, really, really need proof that he's not there because of this made-up threat, essentially. If you don't believe, um, you suffer horribly for it. Um, and, and so, it seems like a good idea to hedge your bet. But I don't think, I don't think it really helps to hedge your bet. If he's going to burn you in hell because you don't believe, then, then you know, fudging and crossing your fingers isn't going to fix it. Um, and if the evidence refutes the story, if evidence refutes the story, ignore the evidence. Um, lack of certainty, yeah. Um, you can always rationalize everything. Um, oh, we got stuff down below that doesn't show. Yeah, if, um, I, I've heard I've heard people argue that if, if religion is, if their faith is illogical, then essentially they're ready to abandon logic. Even, say, the law of contradiction. <coughs> if you... If you don't, uh, if you don't want to let go of belief in something, you willing to uh, just accept a plain contradiction. Yeah. Um, in science, uh, in order to contribute to new science, you really have to have a great reputation. People really have to think you know what you're doing, and you're doing things honestly, and you, you're really going somewhere with with something that. that nobody else has got going yet. <coughs> um, and a lot of people seem to think that, that at whatever level of ignorance they have, they should be able to be in the argument at the same level as, uh, as anybody who's actually a scientist. You know, you get um, these science discussion boards on, on the internet. Um, you got guys that come along and, and tell you that evolution is impossible because um, the second law of thermodynamics says that uh, um, entropy increases everywhere all the time. And well, then you find out they don't really understand entropy at all, <laughs> and they don't know what it is, and they don't know, you know, um, how it how it behaves. In the um, and so you, you ignore them as much as you possible you can, but they, they like to come and heckle. And, uh, so, um, never ever lie about anything. If you ever watch a uh, scientific scandal where somebody falsified data, um, I mean, sometimes they get away with it, and sometimes it takes a long time to find out. Eventually, people find out. And once they do, your reputation as a scientist is just gone. I mean, you will never be a, um, you know, a believed research scientist again. Um, writers of scripture, on the other hand, that are fervently believed, um, most of them have never been identified <coughs> correctly. Nobody knows who wrote the Gospels. Um, lots of things that were attributed to Paul um, were written, obviously, by someone other than the person that wrote. So the other things that were attributed to Paul. So I, I think oftentimes people would, uh, back in the days of miracles, would... Uh, write something that they sort of wanted to get into the 
into the mix of their, their religion, uh, some opinion of theirs or some version of, of a story that they liked better than the versions they saw in the scriptures. And they would uh, attribute them to someone who was famous uh, or someone who uh, you know, was identified as a prophet and, and widely regarded as a prophet and sort of you know, slide them in. Um, Often a single gospel had more than one uh, author. Um, Joseph Smith, for example, who started uh, Mormonism, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or at least the beginning of it, um, he was reputed to be a well-known scam artist, and, and the story itself is not, not even plausible about how he found the golden tablets and all this stuff and then lost them. Um, <laughs> And, and if you ever read that book, um, I started reading it, but I couldn't stand to read very much. But the, 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 the first book, I think, is Moroni or something. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a um, sort of an imitation of, of the flowery language in the King James Bible. But of course, it, by then, it was, even then, it was archaic. It was uh, a couple hundred years later than that. And it was, it was just empty. But, and then there's a, a, the story of L. Ron Hubbard making a bet that he could start a religion, and apparently he won that one. <laughs> um, does everybody know L. Ron Hubbard? Oh, yeah. Um, and then I, I thought I'd review um, what it took to get um, to one thing in science. Now, um, see, 10 years after the, uh, the burning of Anyway, um, Giordano Bruno, he, 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 uh, he was teaching that uh, the stars were other worlds and that, uh, that they were populated. And partly for that, uh, he was eventually hunted down and captured by agents of the church. And he was tortured for an extended period. I believe his tongue was torn out and he was burned at the square. Um, yeah. Uh, in 1600, so Galileo was aware of that. He hardly imagined how courageous he had to be to bump, bump heads with the church after, after seeing that kind of stuff. But uh, that was the first time that we know of that anybody pointed a telescope at the sky. And then Newton made a first reflecting telescope, which meant that you could make huge apertures and, and gather an enormous amounts of light. Um, and then uh, a spectroscope is another thing that was necessary. What, what I'm working up to, of course, is the, the uh, expansion of the universe and even the fact that there was anything outside of our galaxy. And so we have um, all these instruments and this, this continuing work on improving telescopes and instruments and, and the theory that goes behind it. The spectroscope doesn't tell you much until you realize that the Doppler theory, uh, Doppler effect uh, makes uh, the color and wavelength of light change relative because of the relative motion between the source and, and the viewer. Um, and so what we have here is, is uh, more than three centuries of telescope development and, and ongoing research. And then, um, the, like I said, the spectroscope, the theory of the Doppler effect, and uh, photography, and electric motors for, for driving the, the clock drive. Accurate clocks, even, was a big development in, in between those times. And, uh, and then we have uh, 1872, they managed to, to uh, measure the velocity of a star. Um, and then Hubble uh, 23 uses a uh, 100 inch telescope to discover a, a variable star in Andromeda that proves it's outside the galaxy. 1920s, so we're over 300 years from the invention of the telescope. First time we ever knew there was anything outside the galaxy. So this, this huge universe of of uh, 200 billion uh, galaxies. We never knew it was there until 300 years after we started using telescopes and astronomy. And there were, there were 
dozens of brilliant people working on this stuff for all that time and, and barely able to do it. And, and if you look at what, what uh, Hubble used, it was a 100-inch Hooker telescope. It's a 100-inch diameter piece of glass that was cast. It spent a year cooling so that it wouldn't crack. It was polished on its front surface to within about a couple millionths of an inch of perfect mathematical parabola and held that way during the time that it's used, the way that it's mounted, and they have a 100-foot diameter dome where it's temperature controlled inside so it, it doesn't affect the expansion of the glass. Um, and they sit for hours in the cold of the night, and they guide this telescope to make sure that it stays on what they're pointing it at. And they take this photograph of this very dim object that's, that's millions of light years away, and um, with a, with a spectrograph, and then they analyze the, the film under, under a microscope and make measurements on it, and then do these elaborate calculations to figure out. Um, oh, I, I really screwed it up this time. Um, these elaborate calculations to figure out how fast the, the star, the galaxy is moving. And then Hubble, they collected enough of this data, Hubble uh, figured out that uh, there was a trend line, a correlation <laughs> of. Uh, a linear correlation between the distance and, and to the stars, which they, of the, to the galaxies, which they measured with these Cepheid variable stars, and and the uh, the redshifts. And the reason why I talk about this is because it's just one little fact, but there's this enormous amount of effort, millions of dollars, several people's careers, whole careers of these brilliant men, and sometimes women. Um, to, to come up with this, this one piece of information we have about the re reality of nature. And uh, <coughs> it's uh, vastly greater than, than the effort that goes into making up a story that people will believe um, without any, any real uh, skepticism. In religion, um, any new pretense can become a new dogma. There are, according to Wikipedia, <coughs> the, uh, the source of all truth, um, there are about 4,200 religions in the world. They all disagree with each other. At most, one of them could be right, and yet the believers sort of fervently cling to them. Um, without regard, and I think one of my own personal experiences that, that made me more skeptical skeptical about religion was a survey of religions course, you know, world religions course that I took in college. And uh, I'm not doing that very well. That uh, showed me that there were all these different belief systems that people sort of believed equally um, without any once you know that there are so many of them, or, and they're so different, uh, it seems that the faith of the people you know uh, is less justified than, than you thought when you only knew about one or two of them. Um, another thing that one of the discussions we were having in the line to the bathroom was uh, <laughs> that uh, it often seems that, that people have the religions of their parents. Or their communities, and, and if you if you look at them, there's a really good correlation between um, between the rate of birth and the and the growth rate of the religion. You look at uh, I think there are two shakers left in the world, <laughs> um, but Mormons and the uh, and the Muslims are growing very, very fast. So. Um, and there's seldom any consequence for being wrong. Um, once in a while. I remember reading this, uh, there was a book on the, uh, the war between science and religion. This guy named White wrote it back in the 1800s, I think. Um, I think there was, uh, during, uh, there was a smallpox ep epidemic and, and they had come up with a, uh, a vaccination for it. And uh, I think it was the Catholics at, at one time in Montreal were, were resisting the the uh, clergy was resisting the idea of having 
vaccinations and, and the Protestants were not. And then what they found out was that the Catholic kids were dying and the, and the uh, Protestant kids were, were not. And so they uh, changed their teaching. Mm -hmm. Also, also you find that, that uh, opposition to the, uh, the lightning rod went along sort of something like that. Yeah. Um, that uh, for a while there were fiery sermons about how there was uh, thwarting the will of God and expressing his anger. And, but then there are all these churches are usually the tallest thing around, so they get <laughs> blasted by lightning. So they just started sort of quietly putting lightning rods on them. Um, it didn't look that good when the, when the churches got destroyed by lightning. <laughs> That's all I've got. So. Any questions or comments or heckles? Yeah. Um, heckles? When it comes to contradictions in religious hypotheses, like you had quoted the Moses dictating his own death, <coughs> the apologists have gone back and said, well, he was weeping while he wrote that through divine inspiration. I'm often very amused by the claim that the fossil record was put there by Satan to mislead the non-believers. Yeah. So it, it seems like if you were willing to add complexity to your religious hypothesis, you can resolve its contradictions and then say, oh, well, science still hasn't resolved all the inconsistencies in some of the cutting-edge theories. What do you think is the most effective way to debate that, that tactic? I, I, um, I, I think if, if people are devoted enough to, to obfuscation, there's really no way to get around it. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the end, you, you can't say anything certain about any matter of fact. And so you're, you're just, uh, you know, when, when people are going to evade the facts, they're going to evade them. Um, I, I don't know how to get around it. Yes. Uh, you dropped a couple things during the, your talk. No, the same um, thing twice. Do you think the law of gravity is provisional? <laughs> I think the law of gravity is provisional. I think that the fact of gravity is, is certainly true. Exactly what its formula is, is, is uh, possibly in error. Guaranteed. And if, if, like, like, if, you look at, if you look at what happened with Newtonian gravitation, um, it's an excellent approximation. And, and it's still used almost all the time. But the force, isn't it a reality? Oh, the force is a reality, yes. But the theory that, so that explains it, and, well, Newtonian gravity is wrong. Slightly. Well, maybe Newton was wrong. Well, he was. But we've refined that. We've refined that. We've got a new theory of gravity. It's an Einstein's theory <coughs> and it's, of gravity. And it's wrong too. And it's probably wrong too, yes. And, and, and that's the thing. It's not wrong by enough so that we can detect it, but maybe someday we will detect that it's slightly wrong and it's just a better theory. And, and also, uh, the general theory of relativity is in conflict with quantum mechanics. They make extremely good predictions of everything we can measure. Those two theories. We can't measure at the small scale where, where they run into uh, conflict. But there's something wrong in one or both of them. And we know that. So they're provisional. They are the best we've been able to do so far. And all of science is the best we've been able to do so far. We have the things that we believe in science are the things that we haven't refuted yet. Yes? Um, your ending remarks reminded me of a, a study I did five or six years ago of the different religions and what they all believed about when life began. And it was all across the board, anywhere from conception or maybe even before conception to um, you had to be alive outside of the womb for 30 days. Uh -huh. I mean, and all that got plugged into all the uh, conflict about stem cell research mm -hmm. and, you know, had a lot to do with, you know, basically killing all the funding, the federal funding for stem cell research. But, but there was, I mean, it was total disagreement yep. on when life began. I mean, among all the religions, it was yeah. just, you know, it was total chaos. Yeah, the, the other thing that I didn't mention, too, is that like, basically there's one physics. Every, every physicist in the world 
you know, except for the stuff out on the bleeding edge, believes basically the same thing about physics. Um, whereas religion, you can proliferate indefinitely because there really isn't any restraint, any constraint on, on whether whether you know, they can agree or, or whether whether anything they say is true. And most of what they talk about or that the people care most about in religion or, or other than other people's sins is, uh, <laughs> is whether or not they're going to die and you know, uh, what's going to happen in the afterlife and all this other stuff. But anything else? No? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.